and welcome to Practice Time with Ms. Rona. My name is Rona May Arca, and I'm a registered music teacher in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So this is a series where I open up my practice room and you get to hang out with me while I practice. Sometimes it's my students' pieces and their technique, and sometimes it's my own. So today it's a little bit of both. And um, before I forget, I guess I should say that this is the last stream for 2020. Yay! Uh, last week lessons was this week, so uh, the students and I are off for a couple of weeks. Uh, doing a, I think we're all in need of a, a good break. So um, let's start with that. So I've got some um, Christmas break practice ideas. So let me just change the screen here. No, other way, that way. Okay. Oh, excuse me, my throat's ticklish. <coughs> oh. <coughs> You'd think with two air purifiers in the studio that dust wouldn't be getting into my throat, but no, no. <coughs> okay, so for my students' theory homework, and that's in quotes. Uh, I've uh, put together this blog post, so if you head over to the, the studio website, links down below, uh, and the link to this specific post actually is down in the video description. But um, I told my students to have fun playing with these online music games. Um, I know some students have smartphones, so they've got apps, uh, so there are, um, if you go rooting around um, under, I think it is the studio technology hashtag on the archive side here on the far right, uh, or you just do a search for apps, uh, you'll see uh, some recommendations that I've had for iOS devices as well as Android devices. Uh, this one specifically online music games because I was looking for stuff that we could do during our last week of lessons that wasn't too taxing on the brain. So, I mean, for instance, there's this, and I don't think I'm sharing audio, which is just as fine. But, oh, I did not tell it that I want to have flash. So it's an orchestra game where the students will listen to a, a brief clip, and then they have to identify which instrument it is, and, and then it... Um, Oh, I even turned off sound on this computer, so I won't have any idea. I'm just going to, yeah, that was probably wrong. Oh, well, I'll hit exit. Uh, there are a few other games, like there's this channel scramble. Uh, this one you'll definitely need sound on as well. Uh, it's, it's neat. Uh, the students have to listen because uh, there's the three different instruments, and they each have their own assigned track. And then you have to identify which, which instrument is on which track on the mixer board. Uh, there are lots of games here. So if you head to Theta Music Trainer, there's lots of other games as well, according to my colleagues. Um, this one I quite enjoy. And I think I personally am going to be playing around with this over the break just because it's nice and brainless. <laughs> Uh, so what it does is, uh, it's named after the, the artist, but it converts our little scribbles into sound, and then it creates a loop. Oh, I have no idea what that's going to sound like since, once again, I've muted the sound there. So that, that should be quite neat. Uh, there's a spectrogram as well that I, I have to show off because that's cool. So I've been quite fascinated by waveforms. Uh, but spectrograms, I'm not too familiar with, but uh, I mean, it does look very pretty, all the, the lights, and you can tell the lower pitches are down below here, and they're fuller. So that's consistent with, uh, with waveforms as well. The wine glass is kind of interesting, too. So in addition to that, I've uh, also 
put down a, a nice list of various virtual tours. So I've basically told my students, go on a few of these tours, recommend a few tours, to let me know wh what your favorite was. So um, this week we checked out the Musical Instruments Museum in Phoenix, Arizona. Man, we're sold. When it's safe for us to travel again, we're going there. <laughs> Field trip. <laughs> uh, down below, I wasn't able to get a, a, a video, but if you head to Studio Bell, which is in Calgary, uh, they, their website, they've got the Speak Up series. It's an online exhibition featuring our very talented Indigenous artists. Uh, so there's, actually, let's, let's hop on now because uh, it's that kind of day. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my students and I, we've been talking all week about how we're just a little brain dead. So just clicked on this here. So you've got your uh, artist there on the left. I've heard Tanya Takash, I believe. Seventh Fire. Uh, who else have I heard here? Jeremy Dutcher, oh my gosh, he is fantastic. He, they, yeah. Well, Jeremy is fantastic in concert. Uh, all of these folks. So definitely check this site out as well. Uh, if Once everything opens up again and you have the opportunity to go in, it's, it's beautiful architecturally as well. Um, what else do I have here? So other tours. Uh, this is kind of neat too, the Morgan Museum in New York. They, they've got some of Beethoven's manuscripts. So this is a presentation of uh, where they analyze some of his scribbles from his notebook and try to you know, decipher it and then try to find out if that actually made it into the final manuscript for his, his pieces. Uh, and then finally, there's virtual concerts. So Calgary Philharmonic, they've been doing a wonderful, is it weekly or almost weekly, uh, series where they started with one musician and then two musicians and then three. So they're really making the most of you know, the, the situation and exploring chamber music. Uh, the Stravinsky, The Soldier's Tale, that was, that was a neat collaboration. Uh, and then Metropolitan Opera and the Berlin Philharmonic, they've been sharing previous performances. So all available for free. Donations welcome, of course. Uh, just sign up and you, you'll get access. So like I said, that was my one suggestion for students for fun things to do over the break. Um, other things, sight read a lot. Oh, that's my practice list. Don't need to see that. <laughs> Uh, so there's sight reading is probably the easiest thing to do because uh, you could just grab a book and just read through it. Ear training, um, yeah. If if you're on an iOS device, the most amazing sheep game is absolutely adorable. It's a platformer, uh, and you know, what I was telling my students is you know. Yeah, do keep practicing, but it can be a lighter schedule. <laughs> we, we need that lighter schedule sometimes, uh, just for that brain to, the brain and the body to reset. All right, so those are my ideas there. If you have any ideas on um, fun ways to practice over the break, drop them down in the comments. That would be great. And uh, if you do go any, on any of those tours that are in with the blog post or try any of those music games uh, or at the concerts, uh, let, let me know what you thought of them. And I'm just going to close out of this window here on that screen, otherwise I'll get distracted. And I don't know about you, but my students and I, we've noticed we've been getting distracted far too easily this week. Uh, we're all definitely itching for that break. So if you're just tuning in and you just stumbled upon this, uh, welcome. I am uh, in my practice room, in my studio, and you're just, this is an opportunity for you to hang out, listen to me practice. It might be some pieces that you're working on. You might get ideas for repertoire, I 
that you want to explore, or you might get practice ideas. So uh, that's pretty much why I'm doing it. And you know, just keeps me on edge, too, or like on my toes. OK, let me find this piece. Trying to keep an eye on the clock here. I don't want to go too long, because you know it's Christmas break. Uh, OK, so this is Away in a Manger. OK, so my student has been plunking along with this. The main thing that he's working on is he's solid with the rhythm. He's got the notes. Uh, it's just working on the pedal. And uh, with, with us doing lessons online, it's, there's only so much we can do, um, although I mean, we've been managing as well as we can. So uh, the, the link to this particular arrangement is down in the video description. Uh, so uh, uh, Julie Lind is a, uh, a teacher, I believe. Uh, so she's got various arrangements. And other teachers as well have various arrangements on that pianosongdownload.com. OK, so I'm just going to switch cameras. So let's do, let's put both cameras up. But I'm going to switch to the pedal cam since pedal is what my student needs to work on. <laughs> Don't mind the mess. We've got cables, cables, cables. Um, I used to work at an office manufacturing company, and that would already be a cable <laughs> management fail. Oops. OK, uh, let's just do this. That might be a little bit easier for you to view. Oh, well you get to see like the bottom of my, my funky chair. Oh, dear. OK, my battery is red, so just give me one moment. I am going to mute and change the battery. Because the voice, I can just see that cutting out just smack dab in the middle. So I need to go to <laughs> this camera and mute the mic. So just a sec. OK, so I'm back. Batteries changed. The, uh, the wireless transmitter is solid green. So hopefully everything's sounding good in the headset. So if something is off, I'm going to take off the headset. But please drop it in the live chat so I notice. <laughs> All righty. OK, so pedaling for my student. So I'm just going to run through this. And I put this first because it's going to be my warm up. So first off, to show off to him, so legato pedaling, that foot is always just behind the note. So it's note, foot, note, foot. I'm just going to do a quick run through, warm up for me, demo for him. So.
<laughs> there we go. I didn't think too hard about fingering there, um, and that was me almost, not quite sight reading. I, ha I think I've read through it once. And I'm just putting this back in his folder so that I don't have to fiddle around with it later. Okay, so next step. So I was trying to figure out just how to organize this for today. Um, and uh, last week I featured the, the the big three compo or three big composers from the classical era, so Beethoven, Haydn, and Mozart. So why I wanted to continue on because my students are working on other classical composers as well. So oh, that needs to go away. <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna just do this because I can. Huh. So. But I didn't want to put too much on because, like I said, uh, <laughs> it's last week of lessons. Uh, I think everybody's brain cells or spoons, if you follow spoon theory, uh, the balance is kind of low. So uh, just short focus practice. So that brings some ideas of what do you do when your energy is low and you're exhausted. So uh, there are, are going to be times where it's just best to leave it. <laughs> and go sleep. Uh, I am awake enough, though, and coffee is great. All right, that's a mochaccino. So, definitely awake enough to tackle this. Uh, okay, so my student is working on speed. She's got it. So uh, there are a couple of drills that we've been playing around with. I need to grab the metronome. I'm just debating which setup would be good for this. I guess probably it's good to have both, whether or not it's good to do the side by side, or yeah, I could play around with that. I discovered this view earlier in the week doing martial arts tutorials for our Kohai or juniors uh, in Newfoundland. So, okay, so. 108. I think she's she's not at one, 108. She is. I'm going to start at 72 because I have no idea what my speed is. So what I'm going to do is the trading twos drill uh, that if you hop onto the studio's Facebook page or the Instagram page, you'll, you'll see a demo of that. So um, Or just listen to any jazz piece <laughs> uh, where they're trading twos. So one instrumental play for two bars and then some, or improv for two bars and then someone else will play for two bars. Uh, but in this case, it'll be play for two bars, metronome takes two bars. So. Animated alligator. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down to 69, maybe 66. So animated alligator. Yeah, I think my brain can handle that. <laughs> okay, maybe brain can't handle that after all. <laughs> okay, let's try maybe. I have to identify what my starting speech should be. That, that, that's the ticket. Okay. That felt like I was more like 54, to be honest, or 52. <laughs> okay, animated alligator. Animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator. Okay, 
So for those who aren't familiar, I'm hearing something echoey. Is something echoey? <laughs> oh dear. That shouldn't be it. Everything should be okay. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe my ears are just too sensitive. <laughs> um, so instead of counting a one e and a two e and e or tika tika tika, uh, I'm assigning a syllable to each sixteenth note. Uh, and uh, I learned this from Eleanor Lawson, my teacher at university. So animated alligator. Okay, so I'm totally messed up in bar five and six, so let me just try and sort that out. All right, I'm going to try that again, and then I'm going to flip-flop. So I'm, for those who are curious, I'm at 52. that again. Okay. Animated alligator, animated alligator. Okay, now I'm going to switch. So, animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator. I think I missed a bar. Okay. Okay. For the sake of time, I'm not going to repeat it, although I technically should, because uh, that wasn't clean enough, but we'll see. Maybe I can still pull it off. So now, well, let's see if I can handle 56. Um, so that's one drill for speed. Oh, maybe I'll do the other drill on the other piece, because that one also needs speed drills. Uh, so th I'll try 56, <coughs> trading twos again. So you can see I'm only doing an eight bar chunk. Uh, I'm actually, for this one, going to just zoom in on the second line, since that one is the most likely, <laughs> the one that needs more work. Animated alligator, animated alligator. Okay, let's switch. Animated alligator, animated alligator, animated alligator. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a chance and put the eight bars together. Because I think the first phrase is simple enough with that repetitive pattern that my brain can handle it today. Okay, just the tail end. Okay. So yeah, that's the other thing over the break, or if you're pressed for time, just practice what needs to be practiced. So your trouble spots. You could do like a quick run through of stuff, but um, you can have a very productive 10 minute practice or a five minute practice, honestly, uh, so long as it's focused. So yeah, if you're tired, then it's gonna be a short, short practice. Because <laughs> it seems like, yeah, you're running against the clock if you're exhausted. Okay, I'm just going to try, just for fun, for shiggles. Let's see if I can get to 60. Animated alligator, animated alligator. <laughs> Not 
too shabby. Um, so what I could do uh, if I was doing a longer practice is uh, try to get that up. Let's see, I started at 52, I'm now at 60. Uh, I could try to get it to 69 or 72, and that could be one day. Uh, the next day I could deal with the next two lines. Although it's pretty much this, almost the same thing, just an octave higher. Mm, neither here nor there. Again, it you know, depends on brain and energy power, truly. Okay, next up. Okay, let me just bring this closer. Okay, etude. So my grade nine student, oh, let me just put this away. So just trying to keep things organized. Um, that's gonna go with that student. And this one's gonna go with this student. I've uh, started for some of my students not even using the four star books with the Bennett and Cap for sight reading and just grabbing random, random music books. So lately, it's been Christopher Norton, so his American Popular Piano, just to give the students a completely different style. Next time, I p might pull out some bossa nova. Who knows? All right, etude. OK, stretch back. Oh, I need to stretch more. Woo, can't lose that. I need that for tomorrow. So I've noticed with this chair, um, I, mean, I can, for those who've seen the initial and the, the unboxing assembly video is coming, I still, that is one of the projects that I'm going to fiddle around with. But I can touch the floor. This is great. The only thing is with the piano keyboard, this is kind of high. And rather than bringing it up and down all the time, my active seating disc that I got from Fitter First. So uh, I'll drop the link down below. It's I, I think it's fitter1.com to be honest. But lots of cool things there. I wonder if the mascot doggy is still there or if there's a new mascot doggy. Okay, so what was my student's challenge with this last night? It's getting cleaner, but now she's got to work on speed. Uh, Everything is actually also grouped in two bar chunks and then it goes a two bar phrase, two bar, and then four. So, um, I'm going to zoom in, I think on bar five, six, seven, eight. Uh, mainly seven and eight because that that is a slightly different pattern, so that that will require a bit of tweaking just to bring up the speed on that. May or may not use the metronome. We'll see. All right. Oh, I wonder if I should put like a mat underneath to make this easier to roll because my carpet's thick. <laughs> Food for thought. I think what I'm going to do, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm going to switch views, but I'm still going to keep it like this. As it's important to see the slurs, <laughs> the articulation just as much, but oh, the overhead view, I think, is probably more important one of the two. So. Okay. Oops. See, there's that repeating pattern. Repeats an octave higher. So same fingering. It's a repeating 
pattern. I shouldn't be messing up on the last repetition. <laughs> Watch what I'm doing with the wrist as well. And body. Because that I'm using the body to help compensate for the weaker fingers. So <laughs> plus it's just healthier to move your body when you play. <laughs> That feels awkward on the way down, though. So I'm going back and forth, adding little bits grouping forwards, grouping backwards. <laughs> Fingers are a little bit weak. I haven't, uh, like full disclosure, I have not practiced my technique <laughs> or technical requirements as much as I should. It's been, yeah, uh, same. <laughs> Same thing with the students. It hasn't been the greatest for practicing this week. Uh, I was busy doing reports, progress reports, and updating goal setting sheets and milestones. So that took a lot of brain power, I have to admit. <laughs> to work so much on speed today on this. I'll just have to work on getting it to flow. Um, I have to remember to look at the camera on top rather than at the screen. <laughs> Does anyone else have trouble with that, with, you know, Zoom lessons and that? Uh, there. OK, that's coming OK. Brain's tired of that section. So I'm going to move on, reset. Let's deal with bar 7 and 8. So yeah, that's another point too I should probably bring up. So when I was growing up, I was told with a treble spot, drill this for 10 times, or it should be better. But um, I think especially this year, uh, well, especially now with, you know, we just have so many distractions. So you've got to keep in mind how many, how many focused repetitions you can do where you're completely focused on what you're doing. Uh, and you have to stop the moment you stop paying attention. So, but I mean, there's no point if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. So.
is the most zigzaggy C minor scale I've seen in a while, at least this week. I'm just going to drill it backwards as well. So. As you know, there's one thing we haven't tried yet. Actually, just reading it backwards. Um, that is a martial arts drill that I learned at was it the May seminar. Yeah, I think it was the Guelph seminar. Carol Galligan Sensei. She had us do our techniques completely backwards. Uh, it hurt the brain. So, therefore, it's a good thing to try. <laughs> so, I'm going to do downbeat of bar nine. So, and then the F back up to G, down to B natural. So I'm reading completely right to left. I have to really think about what fingering. Okay. Now I'm going to do that forwards. Dang, that works. That works. That that flowed better. Okay. Oh, I have a knot there. I need to sit on my little or lie down on my little acupressure ball. That looks like a peanut. Um, later. Okay. Um, that should hopefully give my students enough ideas for cleaning up that and getting it to flow. I'm gonna take a very quick look. At are we doing time on this today? I'll take a look at bar nine and ten. Sure. <laughs> Actually sounds like a good place to stop. Okay, I am going to try that going backwards drill, which is really going to hurt my head. Okay, um, so how does that work with the ties? <laughs> That's a good question because I'm going to start on the downbeat of bar 11. Um, so I'm going to play those notes at the end of the beat because you have to hold it for the whole beat. And that's a tie, so. decide to do this? should have kept going to the beginning of that section of bar nine, but uh, we'll take a gamble. We'll see if that worked uh, and see if it flows better. seemed to me that that actually 
sounded okay. <laughs> that sounded better. I'll do it one more time just to see and lock it in. So. Yeah. All right. So, 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 so. That would be my recommendation to my student in terms of trying to get uh, to get it flowing and get it a little bit faster is uh, the play a completely backwards drill. So reading right to left. As well as the grouping forwards and grouping backwards. But uh, and then again, if it's a day where, you know, brain power is low and energy is low, just try one drill. And then maybe the next day, try a different drill. Okay, last student piece that, and I am questioning my logic, <laughs> my uh, logic in putting this one in, but he does fit in with the theme because Schubert was one of those transitional guys. Because he was born, you know, tail end ish of the classical period. Uh, but his comp composition style was very, very classical indeed, with like little hints of romanticism. So, hmm. So my student's working on memory on this one, or she's got the memory. She's polishing it. Uh, I think I need to. <laughs> I've got to drill page three. Because frankly, I suck on page three, so uh, yeah. All right, but since you know it's the last week before holidays and brain power is an issue, I'm gonna pick. <laughs> the suckiest part, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the small part. Okay, so I'm gonna drill the pickup into bar forty-two. Let's do that. Okay, I think I just want a da da da. I just want to check the string quartet ish four there's no way my student and I can do four I know she's been doing five I won't too down drill. I just needed to go through it to figure out which drill I should actually use. Yeah. So. Okay. B double flat. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to deal with that B. Almost, almost. Okay, now I'm going to do 
two countdown drill on the next beat. Try that with the next section. flat too early. I'll take that, um, and just because it is a harder piece, and I still have other stuff that I need to run through, uh, I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, that is a victory. Uh, so I'll have to do that again. So that's the countdown drill. I drilled each chord three times, and then two times, and then once. Uh, but if it's you know a little too messy on one stage, then you got to repeat the stage. It's like a video game. So, okay, that one's done. Okay. Now, wrapping up with this. So I'm playing at Mass tomorrow, and I just got my list finalized a few hours ago. So. So, so far we're still with the uh, added restrictions. We were still what you... Uh, <laughs> Words are hard right now. Uh, we're still down to one cantor, or one soloist, and uh, one instrumentalist. I think I need a snack, because I haven't had lunch yet. So I am going to have a snack. Let's see what we've got here. Perhaps not the healthiest snack. <laughs> but I'm going to open a Prezi. This is from one of my students from earlier in the week. Oh, what cute stickers! <laughs> Very cute. Thanks for a good, for a first good three months of piano, because he, he just started with me this year, but uh, he has uh, 
He's gone through the Music for Young Children program, which is absolutely fantastic. Beautiful card with Mother, Mother Mary there and Baby Jesus. So, beautiful. Thanks, Elias. All right. So, yes, I know that these, this is snacks. Probably not the best snack, but I'm hungry now. Oh, it's parties! Yes! Okay, hang on. Just need to get the wrapper put in the recycling bin. Oh, yes, purdies. Okay, which one should I try? Crafted with 100% sustainable cocoa. Did you know that? I did not know that. <gasps> Ooh, Irish stout, mandarin, mango, matcha. Sake and sakura. Let's do it. Mm, hard as ruby praline. Wait a minute. Ooh. The white pyramid is peanut butter crunch. Mayan. Then there's like almond butter and coffee crunch. Oh my. I'm still trying to find the sake and sakura, though. It is, it says it's dark and includes alcohol. <laughs> and then there's Saskatoon Berry, which is dark. It's round. I'm going to take a guess that it might be that one. There's okay, I think that's... Are they in any order? It doesn't seem like they're in any order. Oh, here, sorry. I'm not showing them off properly. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that maybe this is the sake and sakura. No. It's yummy. This might be dairy cream. I really want to find the sake and sakura. <coughs> oh, <coughs> small the <drop. I'm going to eat carefully. I am hearing an echo somewhere. Must be coming out of that laptop. It's just every now and again. Okay. I want to try one more, and then we'll get to Christmas music. Uh, which one's the sake and sakura? It's round. That's like... That's, I know that's going to be good. Okay, let's guess this one. Maybe? I don't know. No. But it's good. I don't know what it is. Mmm. Mm. Kind of toffee. Nope. I know. Mm -hmm. It's good. Okay. I guess 
that's going to be a bit of an adventure. <coughs> There's a bunch that the picture shows the inside and not the outside. So it's a bit of a guessing game because it's dark on the outside, but the, it doesn't show the, the little chocolatey pattern on the front top. Okay, I'm just going to put this over here. Okay, hand sanitizing. All right, so hit list for tomorrow. Okay, so thankfully, George has picked songs that we have done before. Now, the thing with playing in a choir and or soloists, uh, well, the thing with being in a uh, collaborative pianist or an accompanist is um, that's not your speed. It is the soloist's speed. That's what you have to stick to. Uh, and depending on that person, I mean, if you are the, you're ac accompanying a student, and then you, know, you can coach the student into playing steadily if it's uh, someone who's not a student. You're really at their mercy. <laughs> so if they speed up, if they slow down, if they hold on to notes a little bit longer, if they skip beats. <coughs> So you, you have to be focused for that. OK. That is like the last song. I did run through that last night, so I think I'm OK. Um, this I ran through, but was this was not picked. OK, 487. So this weekend is the fourth Sunday of Advent, or the fourth weekend of Advent. Okay. Two verses, yeah, we might do both verses. Okay. Okay, so since I didn't practice this one last night, I'll do a run through. Uh, where's my intro? Oh, there it is, okay. I changed the intro. <laughs> thing about the singer I'm paired up with tomorrow is he's a strong singer. Uh, I can do whatever. <laughs> I, can, I can just fake it. Uh, the only thing is, as I said earlier, you're you know, at the mercy of their speed. So that is my challenge for this weekend. <laughs> um, so I think he is going to Yeah, he'll do this in time, I think. speeding up here.
Foster. And then probably slow hold. And then, so you get the idea of what, what the challenge is going to be. <laughs> Um, I am just going to practice it normally, but um, I will get a good night's rest tonight, I think, because that's pretty much all I can do, and run through different speeds. So I think to prepare, what I'm going to do is do this at normal speed for the first verse. <coughs> yeah. And maybe I'll do the second verse slower. We'll see. Okay. Um. sure we're speeding up in this spot tomorrow. You can tune in tomorrow and find out. I'm sure we're slowing down. Yeah, I think that'll be, that's my prediction for how it's going to go tomorrow. Okay. okay, next up, 280. I think I ran through 280 yesterday, so I probably don't need to run through it again. I just need to put a poster flag on. He surprised me. I thought we would be doing O Come Divine Messiah, but no. The Angel Gabriel. Okay, yeah, I ran through this last night, so I, I think I'm, I'm good. Okay, seven, nine, eight. and grace yeah okay I think I just have to run through this once um, I think okay I predict my prediction for tomorrow <laughs> well, I'll put the, the live stream link for tomorrow down below my prediction for tomorrow is that we'll be on time but we're gonna be holding the, the last note in each phrase a little bit longer Ah, uh, here's my intro.
and then I'm going to have to speed up here. And then I can slow down. <laughs> and then speed up. And then. And then speed up. It's my prediction. idea of what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. <laughs> um, I need to nail that though because I need to be able to play through that faster than I would normally do it. <laughs> Again, he's, he's a strong enough singer that it, it pretty much doesn't matter what I play. Uh, the, the big challenge is just keeping up with the tempo changes. Uh, 820. Oh, yeah, that's, that's easy peasy. taking extra time there and speeding up here. My prediction. So in the, in the, the case of <coughs> this kind of setup, a lot of it is just you got to know the chord changes so that you can jump forward or slow down as required. Okay, <laughs> uh, and then the last one is People Look East, and I drilled that last night, so I think that's good. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything that I want to run through one more time. Oh, the Advent Candle song. I haven't done that in a while. <coughs> Where's my intro? Oh, there. Okay. I could do it as written. <laughs> I could just do something else.
All right, that takes us to the end of today's session. That's, that's it. That is it. I've got a box full of chocolates that I'm going to try not to finish. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> so yeah, that is, that is it. This is the last stream uh, for the year, for 2020. So uh, off for two weeks uh, and then back at it. Uh, so the, the next practice time session will be the week of the 4th. So uh, that Friday at 2. So I'll get those scheduled. Try to do it before Christmas. <laughs> then there'll be one last thing to, to worry about. Uh, but we'll see. Might have to do that like right after the, the new year. We'll see. <coughs> so uh, just trying to think. Trying with a few I ideas for the new year, a couple of different things. So um, I want to uh, reach out to a couple of my uh, music friends, so some teaching colleagues and <coughs> musicians who aren't teaching. So uh, see if we can get kind of a roundtable discussion happening for a few sessions, uh, kind of like uh, uh, some of the podcasts. Uh, Trash Chase podcast is what I've been listening to lately. So three guys around a table uh, talking about anime and uh, life in Japan. Um, and sometimes they bring on guests. So uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking of, but music related, obviously. So uh, talk about all sorts of things like you know, practice challenges, practice tips, uh, how we got started into music. So just to change things up a little bit. Uh, but uh, that'll be for next year. If you've got any ideas, uh, any suggestions for future content, uh, so whether or not it's like that roundtable discussion or um, other things you'd like to see, uh, pop them in the comments or uh, contact the studio. So the, the website link is down in the description. So that is it, really, for the year. So stay safe, stay healthy, whatever you guys decide to do. Um, don't forget your masks. <laughs> uh, I'm sure everybody's getting a new, s you know, a few masks in their stocking, some fresh ones. Uh, yeah, and that's it till till next year. So, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I'm gonna finish my mochaccino here in a bit. <coughs> I can do that later. So, take care. Till next time.